guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We are here deep within Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, for an event that is probably going to be remembered for years to come. We have something all new that you have been waiting for from Dodge, and it's this vehicle right here. This is it. This is a 2024 Dodge Charger Daytona. But before we get into this electrified, all-wheel drive, all performance car from the Mopar brand known as Dodge. Let's talk about what's going on here. So it goes back to 1966. That was the model year debut for the production Dodge Charger. And over the years, the Charger really was that vehicle that people aspired to get when it came to muscle car performance. Now, of course, other models would come into play like the Mighty Challenger, but going into this new direction, Dodge taking the name Charger, thinking about what that name represents and also where they're going with the future direction. Now, of course, there's a lot of question marks about when it comes to power, when it comes to performance, and when it comes to technology and that all new interior. So what I wanna find out is if you're looking for the future of the muscle car, is this Dodge Charger Daytona the way to go? Let's go ahead, let's dive into ours and find out. Right off the bat, the dimensions. It's very interesting how this does not have that jelly bean EV shape that we're so familiar with. It's like everything's gotta be round like a jelly bean or look like a marshmallow. This definitely has the presence of a muscle car. Now at the front of the business, you're gonna see, and it's, I gotta applaud the designers of this vehicle. You're gonna see a lot of the things from the concept brought into the actual production vehicle. And some of the things I thought for sure weren't gonna make the cut, but they're here on this Charger Daytona. Now when you hear Daytona after the name Charger, that is for the BEV, which is what this vehicle is, that battery electric vehicle. But guess what? Following model year 2025, there will also be another option, a muscle car performance hybrid setup. That vehicle will be known as the Charger six pack. One of those historic names making a return to the Dodge lineup. So very interesting to see how Dodge is being very laser focused with what they are bringing muscle car wise and also tying it in with electrification. Now at the front of the business, you're gonna see that great looking shape straight from the concept car, nice wide front end. You're gonna get full LED headlights. You have your LED daytime running lamp and I love the way that it extends that drag strip illumination all the way from one end to the other gives it that distinct character line that when you see this coming down the road from a mile away, and even if somebody pokes you in one eye and you have an eye patch, you're still gonna know that this is the Dodge Charger Daytona. Working your way down, you do have a functional front splitter with some gloss black. Another thing to remember that with this vehicle, we are being given special privilege to see this vehicle, and this is a pre-production, so some of the finishes and whatnot will obviously, everything will be ironed out by the time that they make it to your dealership showroom, but we just wanna preface with that so that you don't go crazy in the comment section. It's all about getting this spe special access so that you could see what Dodge is bringing. So we definitely wanna thank all of them, but nice to see that functional front splitter. And then as we kind of work our way towards the center, this is really, like I said, that muscle car presence, you get it in the width of this car. And that's the thing that I think blows my mind is just how wide it is. It's actually wider than a previous generation charger. Now, one of the special historical touches is gonna be that Fratzog badge, making a return after all these years, you have a forward facing camera. And then of course, one of the things that's from the concept that I didn't think was gonna make it is the R-Wing. So because this is the Dodge Charger Daytona, this has the R-Wing. Now the reason why I bring this up, this whole Charger Daytona thing, there's gonna be the Charger six pack. That's gonna be the performance hybrid. The front of that vehicle is gonna be a little different 
in appearance than the front of this vehicle. One of the big differences will be the R-Wing. When you see R-Wing, this is the Charger Daytona BEV, battery electric vehicle, but you're gonna have that full functionality. Love how they did the style and the design. Like I said, taken right from that concept car, you're gonna have the lower portion fully functional. Of course, we have a lithium ion battery pack. We need to bring some cool air in there to help with the cooling of that battery pack. And you're also gonna get your dual electric motors, motor up front, motor out back. Now, as we rise up, you could really see how it has that nice indentation for where that airflow is gonna be channeled from the front of the vehicle up and over and onto that roof. Now, there will be an optional glass roof. And of course, being a muscle car, you do get a bulge. So we have that bulge in that hood. Underneath the hood will be an electric motor to power the front wheels. Now, what type of power are we looking at? So when this car debuts, it's going to automatically come from the dealership with the Stage 2 Direct Connection Kit. So at the end of the day, horsepower, 670 horsepower, 627 pound-feet of torque. You're looking at a 0 to 60 in about 3.3 seconds. Quarter mile is going to blaze by at 11.5 seconds. And your range is going to be 268 miles. Now let's talk about that for a second. This car is not meant to be that hyper range BEV. If you want that, there's other options in the auto industry. This is all about performance. And think about it. If you bought a Hellcat Red Eye, were you really buying the Hellcat Red Eye because of the great fuel economy that it gets? Hell no. You were getting it because of the great performance. And that is something that you will get with this Charger Daytona. This being the scat pack. So you're going to have your standard trim will be the RT. Then you have the scat pack. And like I said, at its debut, it will have that stage two direct connection kit. Now it has a 100.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. And then you'll notice that it's going to have aluminum forged components and a dual mode suspension, plus a mechanical limited slip diff out back. Now, if you're comparing this to the Charger six pack, if you remember back in the golden age of the muscle car era, when you say six pack, it wasn't about your, your ripped abs. It was about the three deuces, the three two barrel carburetors. This obviously with the Charger six pack will be not because of carburetors, it will be because of, guess what? They're taking that three liter straight six, that inline six twin turbocharged power plant. They're gonna put it under a different hood, of course, because of obviously the height of the engine and everything with the twin turbos. You'll have, of course, your standard output, 420 horsepower, high output, 550 horsepower. So. It's going to be one of those things where you'll be able to have some choices to make. But the way that Dodge wanted to do it is bring first what they were focusing on all the way back when, when we were at the Dodge Speed Weeks. Now, of course, if you do go that hybrid direction, that's going to come with a torque flight, eight speed automatic transmission. And what's really wild about the technology in that vehicle, even though it's all wheel drive, you will be able to just send power to the rear wheels and have that familiar rear wheel drive muscle car acceleration. Or, like I said, all wheel drive. This vehicle with the twin motors is all wheel drive. Now, speaking of the wheels, of course, we got all new wheel design and I am absolutely loving them. 20 inch wheels, love that metallic silver finish ginormous. I mean, these calipers are as big as Ronald McDonald's head, bright red Brembo six piston calipers. And do you see those rotors behind there? Those are the largest rotors ever put on any Dodge product, 16 inches in diameter. I remember growing up seeing some Dodge products that didn't even have 16 inch wheels. This has 16 inch rotors. Now, of course, you're also going to be able with 
the Charger Daytona, you'll have the regen braking. And then on top of that, you're gonna have different modes, which we'll talk about that when we get to the interior. Now, here's another crazy thing. We're talking about the width of the car, the width of these tires. You're looking at up front, 305 on the width of the tires up front. I love the way it's got the frat Zog badge. Glad to see that they're bringing that badge back, especially at this moment in time with this all new vehicle. Dual mode suspension, like I said, all four corners. And the chassis is much more rigid. It's about 20% more rigid than the previous Charger. Something to think about. But there's also a surprise when it comes to this Charger. A lot of people upset that it only comes in two doors. Well, guess what? You could get a two door or a four door. And the irony in all of this is that the original Charger was only two doors. I remember when the Charger came out back in the mid 2000s and people were like, why does it have four doors? You can never make everybody happy, but guess what? Dodge is gonna do that because you're gonna have a two door and you could also get your four door Charger if that's the direction you wanna go in. Now coming down the side, you gotta have your new Rumble B badges. Love the way they did that new design and I like the way they're keeping it simple with the badges. They're not sticking it all over the place like a pin cushion. You're gonna have Familiar things that you know in the muscle car era that is gonna be on this modern muscle car and obviously the muscle cars taking us into the future. Now this one you can see has that optional glass roof. So that will be an option. And then it's all the touches that they did with the design. I like the way they went gloss black on the mirror caps, good size mirror. On the bottom portion, you have some gloss black and it actually flares towards the rear. Everything is gonna flare out. Once you get to that back of the driver door, it starts to flare out. And I'm also digging how you don't have those usual exposed door handles. Everything is all push button assist, whether you're inside or outside. I think for me, what really makes the side design of the vehicle is the quarter window. Very, very unique. It's not like a Mustang where it's so small. This has a really great shape. And I think that's one of the things that I've always liked about Challengers and everything else is that they always had a lot of room in the back seat, even for somebody like myself, who's six feet tall, we'll eventually be getting back there to see if this car has a lot of headroom. Of course, you can still get a four door if you choose to do so, which I have that review at the end of this one. Now coming towards the rear, 305s up front, you got 315s out back. Still have the ginormous Brembo calipers. Love the way it's got that SRT script there looking good. Massive rotors, larger than a Detroit pizza. And just like I said, I think taking design that's familiar, but putting a little bit different twist on this vehicle. Of course, underneath the charge port door, you'll have your full charge capability and then swing it around back. Love the way they brought that fastback style design. It's all lift back action. So you're gonna have more trunk space than you had on the outgoing charger, plus the design. I mean, even the way that they took the rear glass and, and dropped it past the rear pillars. Love the way it's got that element of design. It's almost like going back to the original Charger Daytona days of NASCAR and all the different tweaks that they would make to the glass, to the wings and everything else to get that aerodynamic efficiency. It's not just about efficiency as in range, but efficiency for performance and downforce. Speaking of downforce, you do have a deck lid rear spoiler, gloss black, nice large size, and check out the way they did the racetrack design of the LED lighting on the taillights with the frat zog in the center, and then working our way all the way down, very nicely done with the flared out rear bumper area. Coming across the back, instead of putting a Daytona badge on it, they actually stamp the name Daytona in the rear of the vehicle. And then on the bottom portion for the BEV, you have the Fratzonic chamber. Remember, this is not just a speaker that makes noise. You got to think of it as a system like a pipe organ. And guess what? Dodge has been working on tweaking that sound since they first unveiled the concept 
We'll see exactly what that sound's gonna be. They have not allowed us to listen to it yet because they want the focus to be on the car and not just on the sound. Of course, if you go with the Charger six pack, you're gonna get your traditional exhaust pipes out the back since you have that internal combustion engine. But what I've been told is that the sound level is going to be right there near a production Hellcat roar. So it's gonna be interesting to see as we get towards that first drive, what this Fratzonic chamber is going to produce sound wise. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the interior because I wanna show you what is all new on this 2024 Dodge Charger. All right guys, we are inside this all new 2024 Dodge Charger Daytona. It's gonna be interesting to see how this pans out because like I said, for the first model year, you'll be able to get the Daytona scat pack that we're sitting in, but you'll also be able to get an RT. Now the RT comes with the direct connection stage one kit. This scat pack comes with the stage two kit for the day of unveil and production. Eventually you'll be able to get a totally different amount of stage kits. So they got tons of ways to customize and modify your Mopar product because they know that that's one of the things that owners love to do. Now, if you want, if you're waiting for a price, no official pricing yet, but I'm gonna suspect that Dodge is gonna be very aggressive on the pricing to make sure that these are going to get out there and get out on the drag strip AS AP, but until we find out more about pricing and some of the other details, let's go ahead, let's see what this interior brings to the door panels. For those who have been waiting for an all new interior in a charger, your day has come. Look at the materials, red contrast stitching, nice smooth soft touch material. You have that attitude adjustment ambient lighting. That's 64 different colors of lighting and what's cool is, is that the lighting changes depending on what you're doing in the car. You'll also notice a black button right in the center of the armrest area. That is to open up the door. Now, before you cry, well, what happens if the battery's dead? You can actually have a manual uh, way of opening up the door, just like the good old days. So don't worry about that, but it's nice to have that clean push button access. Love the way they brought the design elements from the concept and from a 68 charger in here. Door pocket, very interesting on the design. Super long. You could easily get, I would say, five Coney dogs in there, no problem, and a root beer to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same story. Look at all the great materials, the stitching, the ambient lighting, really brings a personality in here that I think a lot of people are gonna gravitate towards. And then if you've been waiting for a new infotainment system, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. There it is, 12.3 inches in size. Remember, if you look at a previous gen charger, that was 8.4 inches. So we've gone up larger, and this is standard. Whether you get an RT, a scat pack, these, this screen is standard. It's got the Uconnect 5, tons of different ways to make your adjustments and modes and everything else. We have real buttons for the AC control, so not everything is in the screen. And of course, we have real knobs, heated seats, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel. Working our way down, look at the way they did the hazards in the triangle, like the Fradzog, USB-Cs, you got wireless charging and a place for five track day Twinkies. And then remember how I was telling you about names? It's back, the pistol grip shifter. So this is gonna control that direct drive transmission. Now, if you're saying, well, Joe, I thought this was supposed to have like a dual speed transmission. That's gonna be with the Banshee, which is also coming out model year 2025. Get ready to hear more about that soon. But we have the pistol grip shifter. Love the way you got the power on button, two cup holders, and then check out our new key fob, the Dodge name with the carbon fiber, remote start and everything, really nicely done soft touch material with the stitching on the armrest. And then my favorite part are these seats. Absolutely fan-freaking-tastic. They have the high back, 
nice bolstering, Alcantara leather, and full power assist for the passenger. Of course, you have full power assist for the driver. And I feel great in here because we have the optional fixed panoramic roof. It really opens up the experience, especially for those in the back seat. But you know what? It's not about your passenger. It's about you, the driver. Come on over here. I want to show you what's behind the all new steering wheel in this Charger Daytona. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. And this is, like I said, a special moment to be able to bring you this all new Charger Daytona. Of course, the seat controls easy to get to within fingertip reach. You do have two memory seat settings, which if you are crazy enough to let somebody borrow your Charger Daytona, they could have their own seat setting and you could have your own seat setting. The great news is, is that whether you're looking at the Charger Daytona or the Charger six pack, a lot of the things on the inside are gonna be very similar. And one of the things that I'm absolutely loving are these seats. I'm six feet tall, you got plenty of room in here, especially with that fixed glass roof. Love the way they did the bolstering, nothing too crazy, but you definitely notice a change from the previous gen Charger, plus they look so freaking good. And then the steering wheel, love what they did. The two piece leather, perforated, smooth with the red stitching. You got your power shot. What is that all about? You hit that button, 40 horsepower for up to 30 seconds. You got your different drive modes, which will include donut mode, donut mode and drift mode. And then you have your regen paddles on the back of the wheel to do your different levels of regen braking. And then if you want a big digital gauge cluster, guess what you are getting in the scat pack 16 inches of gauge cluster all programmable to show you exactly what you want and you get a head-up display if you're wondering well if i don't go with the scat pack if i go with the rt how big is the screen standard screen is a 10.25 inch one of the things i love right off the bat it's not like the mustang where they just take the screen and stick it on with bubble gum i like the way they dropped it in to the actual recess of the dash to give it some extra style. And that's something that I think separates the interior of this car compared to any other muscle car, modern day muscle car that I've been in, is just really the attention to detail and all the special touches. But guess what? It's not just about hauling people, it's about hauling your junk. Let's go pop the back and see how much room there is in this Charger Daytona. All right guys, one of the things, like I said, that makes this new Charger Daytona, so unique, is gonna be that lift back design. So instead of having your standard trunk, we now have that whole lift back of the rear of the vehicle, just like it was on the Charger Daytona SRT concept that we brought you all the way back at Dodge Speed Weeks many, many months ago. Here it is with the rear open. Obviously that's gonna be a power lift back design. I love the way that they brought this into the vehicle because this is what's gonna make it so versatile compared to other cars, other muscle cars that you have been used to. So what you're looking at is 38.5 cubic feet of space. And if you're wondering, can I get a set of wheels, tires, and a jack in here? Yes, you can. With that rear seat, that's gonna do a 60-40 split fold down to give you even more room. Now I know that you wanna go on throttle. I definitely wanna go on throttle with this new Charger Daytona. And of course, like we've been talking about, that Charger six pack muscle car hybrid platform that will be coming in the next few months. But guess what? We have to wrap it up here for Motor City. All right, guys, it's been one special moment. Like I said, this is gonna be one of those things that when you look back 10, 20 years from now, you're gonna say, I remember when, and I'm definitely gonna be able to do that myself. And plus, being able to share it with you has been extra special, but we gotta thank everybody at Dodge, everybody at Stellantis, for allowing us access to these vehicles before they are seen to the public world. But let me know what you think. If you're looking for that next step in the muscle car story, a step with electrification, whether you're going full on BEV or you're thinking about and curious about what that Charger six pack is about being a muscle car hybrid, a performance hybrid, 
Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. I know that the Dodge people want to hear what you have to say. Put it in the comment section, but if you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raiders Rise family. Of course, we need to give it up. Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography, he flew out. He woke up at 3.30 in the morning. He's making it happen. He's sweating a little bit, but you know what? Some hard work is really good for you, Stephen. So thank you so much for all that you're doing. Just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.